talking about the Lady Vols. We're going to be talking high school basketball. We'll be talking a little bit of NASCAR. We've got a couple interviews lined up for you. It's going to be a really great show, so hang on. Sports in the Smoky starts right now. It is Friday, and I would do the long drawn out, it's Friday, but without the rest of the guys here, it just doesn't sound the same. So, we'll just come up with our own traditions here on Sports in the Smokies, won't we? All right, so we're going to start off with the Lady Vols. we got a lot for the show today, so I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. Lady Vols had a game last night. They took on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Now, the Lady Bulldogs were ranked number 8th in the country. Uh, very strong, very good team, and the Lady Vols were handicapped. Renaya Davis was out with the flu, so what that means is they didn't have a uh, lot of depth on the team, and it showed. They let out very well in the first quarter, coming out to a 21-19 lead, and it really looked like it was going to be a competitive game, but the M Mississippi State Bulldogs stepped up their defense in the second quarter, limiting the Lady Vols to just nine points. And uh, the rest of the game went the same way. Lady Vols ended up on the short end of a 72 to 55 score. Uh, that drops the Lady Vols to seven and three in the SEC. Uh, they're still in good position. Everything is looking okay, but they do have a rough road coming up. Um, so it's we're hoping Renaya Davis heals very quickly. So uh, we'll uh, see how that goes. Uh, the other thing about the game last night, the Lady Vols had 23 turnovers. So once again, it's been a problem all season long. Every time they seem to get it knocked down, something happens uh, and uh, they start having problems again. So we'll see how they do coming up in their next games. So moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, high school basketball. But before I do that, I want to take a minute and just remind you guys, just like I said on Wednesday, this is your show, okay? I'm just here talking. I'm going to give you the information, but I really want to hear from you. What do you guys think? What are your responses? So I'm going to start off with a question about the Lady Vols, and then we'll come back and we'll get some answers from it. You can comment right here on Facebook Live, and I will get those comments right away. So the question I'm going to ask you is, we'll start easy. Are the Lady Vols going to make the NCAA tournament? Why or why not? So if you have any thoughts on that, please, by all means, comment. I'll get them right here. We'll put them up on the screen, and we'll have a little bit of a conversation. So I can sit here and talk all day, but it's more fun when I have someone to talk to. So that's how that's going to work out. All right, so we're going to move on to high school basketball. And uh, we had some schedule changes last night because of the weather, and I want to talk about those. So what happened is a couple of the games were canceled outright last night and one was rescheduled. So our schedule for tonight looks a little bit different than it did when we talked about it on Wednesday. So for tonight, we have uh, Sevier County taking on Jeff County, and that's gonna be at home, and it's a district matchup. Gonna be a good game uh, and uh, should be very exciting. Now, instead of Seymour taking on Carter tonight, that game has been canceled, and it's going to be Northview Academy going to Seymour, or going to Carter. That's going to be a really big game, particularly for the Northview Academy girls. Uh, Carter's going to be one of the teams that can uh, supply a challenge, so that one's going to be a fun one to watch. And then in our county rivalry, Gatlinburg Pittman is taking on Pigeon Forge at home. So that's going to be another great game. And then finally, the last game that we're going to talk about, Kings Academy Lions are taking on Grace Christian of Knoxville. So those are our basketball games for tonight. And we'll try to get some uh, footage for that for you and have that out on uh, Morning in the Mountains on Monday. Now, coming up, we've got something pretty cool. I sat down with Wes Mayberry, who is the editor of the Mountain, or the sports editor of the Mountain Press. And we talked about how the basketball season had been going from uh, each of the teams, both the boys and the girls, and how it looks for going forward into the tournament. And it was a really interesting discussion, and let's just go ahead and put that out here for you right now. So not there's District, West so Mayberry. probably not going to make that I up. don't think, and the one that, the game against Morristown West, yep. the, another game that got canceled or postponed, I, 
with only a week left in the regular season, I don't know how much importance they put on being able to make those games up. Okay, so those just may be lost. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead, and what we're going to do next is take a look at each team, and uh, we're going to walk through their season and how they've been, talk about some of the uh, more impressive players, and what their outlook is going forward. So let's start off with Sevier County. Sevier County, uh, we'll start out with the boys, um, just having a great, great season, um, building off of their state appearance last year. And um, I mean, West Maples, Cam McElhaney, the seniors there, um, just continue to, to get better and better and lead that team like seniors should. Um, and you always, you know, the consistent coaching of, of Coach Ken Wright, um, just still doing a, a fantastic job. Um, Cleveland, the number one team in the AP poll uh, in, in AAA, uh, they almost beat them in, in a Thanksgiving tournament in Pigeon Forge uh, earlier this season. So the potential is there. Um, and they've just been building win after win after win. Um, they had a little hiccup when they lost senior Marvin Castro, their starting point guard to injury, but right. they, they've, they've gotten back on track. Okay. Um, Sevier County, uh, the, the girls team, um, they're relying on a lot of freshmen, uh, but they have a, a strong junior class led by uh, McKenna Loveday and Amanda Claybo and Emma Husky. Uh, they sometimes have, have, have uh, you know, they struggle to score at times, mm -hmm. um, but they play such good defense that sometimes that doesn't matter. I mean, they, they, they won a game scoring 20, 30, you know, 25, 30 points. That they can win that way if they have to. Okay. Um, That's a nice thing to keep in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about their AAA rivals, although on the boys' side, that's kind of hard to call it a rivalry right now, Seymour. Yeah, Seymour, um, I mean, both games, Sevier County versus Seymour on the boys' side, not, not even yeah. close. Um, when the game at Seymour was close for a half because Sevier County wasn't playing well, um, but, you know, Ken Wright, Coach Wright got them on track at halftime, and they came out <laughs> and just <laughs> blew the doors off the That place. would have been an interesting uh, <laughs> halftime conversation because... Yeah. He is a gentle soul. Yes. Except on the basketball court. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and um, Seymour, uh, on the girls' side, um, beat Sevier County for the first time in a while earlier this year, and that was at Sevier County. Yeah. Um, big win for, for the Lady Eagles. But uh, just uh, Macy Pittner, that their best player, was, mm -hmm. was uh, ill with the flu um, in the rematch uh, at Seymour. And they just couldn't get any kind of scoring outside of her really too much. And they, that, that was one of those low-scoring games that Sevier County played defense just well enough to, yeah. to win the game. So the uh, Seymour girls, I believe they're 9-11, and 5-3 and three in the district. So they're doing better in district play than they are overall. Uh, that's correct. I mean, <laughs> Seymour girls, I have them at 6-6. Uh, six and six. Okay. Um, this is... Uh, they have six district wins, which is, I think, the same amount as they have maybe combined in the previous two years. Yeah. Um, so they are building under under Coach Hernandez, Greg okay. Hernandez. And your numbers are probably more accurate than mine, so. Okay. So I, I will go with I that. I got these this morning. Then so. they're definitely more okay. accurate. Okay. So that's good. Okay. All right, so that's AAA. Let's move down to the AA. AA. And uh, talk about, I guess we'll start with GP. We'll start with GP. Um, we'll do GP boys. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> they're, uh, like I said, they're, they're building momentum, building steam. Um, they're really strong inside. Um, three really strong post players with Wyatt Smith, Kevin Burkett, and uh, Reese Cole. They're, they're hard to deal with because of their size and their height. Um, and, and they do have, the building off of that, they have Ethan Stennett who can really shoot, shoot the three ball. And uh, they, they're really building something it seems like and have some momentum going at the right time. Okay. Uh, like I said, killed Carter the other night. Yep. And, and that bodes well for postseason process. Carter is a tough team. Carter is. I watched them against uh, Pigeon Forge the other night. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ty Hurst, and uh, I've lost his name, number 23. Um, I can't remember his name, but uh, he looks like a linebacker on, on the, and probably is a linebacker on the football could be, team. Could be. But uh, yeah, you don't want to get in his way when he's driving from right, the bucket. Right. But uh, Ty Hurst was hitting him from the outside, hitting him from the inside, mm -hmm. obviously rebounding machine. Mm -hmm. So if you beat Carter, you've done something. That's right. That's right. And when they, they killed Carter like they did, I mean, that, that just shocked me and showed me, hey, you know, GP is maybe a team to deal with here later on. Okay. And how are the uh, Lady Highlanders doing? Lady Highlanders um, started out really slow, which was a surprise to me um, with, with two college-bound players. Um, Ivy Bales going to American University and, and Shelby Moore going to University of Cumberland's. Um, so with two college signees, you think you'd have a really, you know, really strong, strong team. They started out really slow, though. Um, but like the boys, they have the same record as the boys. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, like like them, that they're they're coming on strong. Yep. And my numbers, uh, I believe they have the exact same record. They do. Fourteen and nine and five That's and three. Right. And and, and that that win over Northview is big for them. That was a huge win. Yes, it was. Um, that's Northview's only district loss. That's right. 
So uh, that that was a big win. It surprised me. Yes. It, it caught yeah. me by surprise. Yes. All right, so who do you want to do next, Northview or Pigeon Forge? Uh, we can go to Northview. Um, All right. We'll start with uh, Northview boys. Um, you know, maybe not, not doing as well as, as maybe they had hoped this year. Yeah. Um, I thought they, you know, talking to Coach Harker, he probably expects to be probably doing a little better than they have been. Uh, so maybe a little underperforming at two and seven in district play. They are 14 and 12 overall, so they're over 500. Um, but they just seem to be inconsistent. And in, in, in recent recent games, he's uh, Coach Harker has been um, really displeased with the energy to start, like the first half energy, or especially in the first quarter. They, yeah. don't, they don't come out and, and play up to the standard that he thinks he, they should be playing. That that really kills them. They were down 18 at halftime um, to Union County uh, the other night. Yeah. And they came back, got it within five. But they spent so much energy getting back to within five that they couldn't pull it out and get yeah, any closer. They couldn't tonight. finish it. And I don't think there's anything more frustrating for a coach than a team that comes out habitually flat. flat. Right. And, and you know they've got more in them. It's just a you, you got to find that key somewhere. Right. right. So. And they, they have you know a nice lineup of talented players. They just have to put it all together yep. for four quarters. Okay. So speaking of putting it all together for four quarters, let's talk about the uh, Lady Cougars. Lady Cougars are Good doing that night. <laughs> um, pretty consistently this year. <laughs> um, Twenty-three and two overall, uh, eight and one in the district. Um, that, that one district loss to GP. It took thirty-three points from from Ivy Bale's career high um, to beat them for that one district loss. Yeah. Um, I mean that that's the kind of Herculean effort it takes to to, to beat a team that that plays you know so together so hard. Uh, you know, they lost two college players, and they're playing college now um, to graduation last year. And you thought, well, they're going to fall off. No, not under nope. Coach Shelley, no. Nope. Um, I mean, she makes them, I mean, she has, she just hasn't planned so well right now. Um, the, the, she called them the X Factors the other night, Lexi and Sarah Bates, the twin sisters. Yes. Um, they've really, really stepped up this year and, and played so much better than they did last year. Yep. Um, Sierra barely even played last year, and now she's, you know, a huge, huge yep. uh, part of that team. We uh, had one of their hustle plays on the show Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I believe it was Lacey was tried to make a pass. Or Lexi. 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 Uh -huh. And uh, it was smacked away by Union County. And Lexi dove out of bounds, threw it back in bounds. Sierra grabbed it and then tipped it back in. And they wound up scoring over it. And yeah. it was all 100% effort. effort. Yeah. And that, that just, I mean, that, that's the team in a nutshell is effort. Yep. All right. Okay, so let's talk about Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge, uh, we'll start with the girls. Uh, 12 and 12 overall, 5 and 4 in district play. Um, maybe overachieving a little bit. I mean, uh, you know, you hate to say that when they're 12 and 12, but they've lost two starters to injury, yeah. and that, that was early on. Um, you know, they lost their point guard, Anna Nas, and uh, their post, and it hurts when you're a small team to begin with, it hurts to lose a post player, and they, they lost Jessica Patel, who had, you know, just come back from a, a knee injury, and now she's, uh, you know, got another knee injury. So you hate that for her. Yeah. But, and you just hate it for the team too, because they probably could have done a lot better than they're doing, but they're, they're hanging on well. They're, they're surviving those injuries well. Um, fourth in the district right now, uh, behind Northview, Gatlinburg, and Carter. Right. So they're hanging in there, I guess is how you would summarize them. Like you said, they're, they're, they've got an even record. They're at 500 and they're battling. So yeah. you can't ask for more than that. That's right. All right, and the, um, the young men of Pigeon Forge. Young men of Pigeon Forge, they're uh, ten and twelve overall, three and three and six in the district. Um, you might say they're underachieving a little bit. Um, they they seem to have a lot of talent on the team, led by uh, Blake Stanager at center, Avery Bohannon um, at point guard, two seniors, mm -hmm. um, Hussein Al Sultani at power forward. Um, he's coming on strong, and uh, they up and down play of Chris Cresswell. Sometimes he's scoring major points. Sometimes you know he's not a factor at all. Yeah. Um, but it, it, you would think with the talent that they have, if they can put it all together, um, they can be a force to be reckoned with. They just haven't shown it yet with, with consistency. Okay. Well, let's hope they can get it together for the tournament. That's right. Yeah. When it matters. <laughs> all right. And then last but certainly not least, the Kings Academy Lions. Kings Academy. Um, we'll start with the girls that, um, having just an excellent oh, season. Oh, what a season they're um, having. I mean, you, you, you kind of saw it last year um, when Jennifer Sullivan and Bailey Burgess uh, were freshmen. You could kind of see they're building something here. And under uh, Coach Blake Derrick, who's done a great job bringing in lots of talent to that team and, and coaching it to, to great success, 17-6 um, and six overall, 11-1 and one in district play. I mean, they're you know, head and shoulders above anybody else in the district if you don't count Lakeway Christian. Uh, Lakeway Christian's a, a new school, um, yeah. and they're not eligible for postseason. So if you, you know, eliminate them, um, you know, yep. Kings Academy is way ahead of everybody else in their district, um, should, should win you know, the district tournament uh, coming up. Yep. Um, I, mean, I know they embarrassed my alma mater. 
Knoxville win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody can seem to compete with them in that district. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, with those two sophomores, Jennifer and Bailey, and then senior Taylor Carter, who they added from uh, Grace Christian, the transfer, um, they, they've got a strong unit. Um, should be a force to be reckoned with in the postseason with state, state possibility. Awesome. Excellent. And, and the boys? The boys uh, the boys are having a little bit of a down year under, under first-year head coach Matt Mercer. Uh, they're 10 and 12 overall. Um, they just they, they need to find more consistency. And, and another problem with them is they have a, just a difficult, tough schedule. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're playing so many teams that have, you know, D1 prospects, D1 signees, you know, on their rosters. It, it's hard to compete against that. Um, they, they do uh, have a nice international flavor, you know, to their yeah. roster. Um, got a guy from Belgium, a guy from Chad in Africa. Yeah. Um, Echo a guy with from, the Vols going on there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a guy from Montenegro. Um, and... I guess the the one that stands out is uh, Angar William from Chad in Africa. Okay. Uh, he's nearly seven feet tall, but this is kind of his first experience with, with basketball. Um, so you know, if he can put it all together and and, and, and yep. um, with that kind of height, um, I mean, he's got some potential. Yeah. Uh, they're is he led a by junior uh, or a sophomore. Um, or he or is a junior, junior. He's a junior. Okay, so we get him another year. Yeah, and they're led by uh, their, their football standout, Zach Tilley, um, yeah. their Mr. Football guy. Um, he's really good at basketball, too. And um, he really, really um, put together a solid season last year as a junior and um, you know, scored the lights out of the place. Um, not doing as much scoring this year, doesn't seem like, um, but still leaves the team okay. um, and is a core piece of that, that group. All right. Well, this has been a quick basketball review, not quite so quick, but we got a lot of good information for you. Uh, we, again, will let you know which games are going to be played tonight and which ones will be postponed or canceled. Wes, thanks so much for coming in. This has been a lot of fun. No problem. I enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be bringing you back, especially uh, once we get into the tournament. And I want to get you and Jason in here for, for baseball. Sounds great. But Jason has to, to wear his vintage uniform. Okay. I'll, I'll pass <laughs> the word along to him. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. This is Sports in the Smokies, and we'll be back right after this. Want more Mountain Fun Life? We are now streaming through Roku. Roku is a device that enables you to stream entertainment to your TV through your internet provider. The starting price is only $29, and you can purchase one either online or through your local electronics retailer. It's easy to use, and you won't have to worry about missing any more Mountain Fun Life episodes. Mountain Fun Life, guiding your adventure. Well, welcome back. I'd like to thank Wes Mayberry from the Mountain Press for coming in and doing that interview. A lot of great information for us as we go through the basketball season. Now, I mentioned this at the top of the show, but I want to go through it again just to make sure that everybody knows what's going to happen. Because of the rain yesterday, we do have a couple of schedule changes. So there are four high school basketball games tonight uh, that will be played, and they're a little bit different than what we had set uh, going in. So, starting off, Sevier County will be playing Jefferson County at home tonight. Then, uh, Northview Academy will be going to Carter to play Carter. Uh, the original schedule was for Seymour at Carter, but because of the rain, that game has been uh, canceled or postponed. And then the other game is still on track. That's going to be Gatlinburg-Pittman taking on Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg. And the Kings Academy will be taking on Grace Christian of Knoxville. So that is our upcoming high school basketball schedule. Like I said, there were a few changes. And uh, so uh, drive carefully tonight. I'm sure you noticed the weather changed. It was 60 degrees and soggy yesterday, and there was snow flurries flying in the morning when I came in this morning. So if you want to keep track of the weather, remember we have Captain Accurate David Aldrich every weekday morning at 9 o'clock with his forecast for the Smokies. And obviously, it's a live stream, and it's available all day for you to check out. And he posts updates as necessary when the weather conditions change. So, I uh, got a comment from Craig. Hey, Craig. And he says, Tennessee has a great signing day class, and that is absolutely true. We stole one from Florida, and it's always a good day when you steal one from Florida. So great signing day class. It's kind of interesting because signing day has changed now that they have the early signing period and you get a lot of the big recruits who are off the table. So when we get to the national signing day, a lot of times it's just the last few holdouts um, and you're just trying to put the final finish on your class. 
Tennessee did finish strong, and uh, it bodes well for what's going to happen a couple of seasons down the road. So, and of course, Tennessee still has some room to uh, pick up a few more uh, along the way. So recruiting is not over. If you ask a college coach, they'll tell you recruiting is never over. So we'll see what happens as uh, things develop there. All right, so what we want to talk about now is with professional football done, that's the signal for everybody to get their motors running because it's time for NASCAR. And Frank Murphy had a chance to interview Chad Fincham. He's a local Knoxville product who has picked up a, a cup ride this season. He'll be racing in the number 49 car and he will be in the field at Daytona. So let's go ahead and take a look at that interview right now. On Mountain Fun Life, hi, I'm Frank Murphy. We are delighted to welcome back NASCAR driver Chad Fincham from Halls, Tennessee. Welcome back, Chad. Thank you, Frank. Now, you're not the only uh, East Tennessee NASCAR driver. There's a couple others who've made it into the big leagues. For example, like who? Trevor Bain. Yeah. And then, uh, Blake Jones. Uh, he's competed a number of times in the NASCAR series. So there's, there's a couple of NASCAR drivers rolling around East Tennessee. So when you're a kid growing up in Halls, you start driving fast where? Where'd you go? Dirt tracks, what? So, uh, basically, you know, I was, I was a local kid playing ball sports in school, and I told Dad, uh, I said, no offense to, to baseball. I said, but yeah. I want some speed. I want to be in a car. So there you go. we started doing some research. Because your family we, watched NASCAR every Sunday. Oh, yeah. That huge, was a big huge deal. Huge fans, yeah. huge Dale Earnhardt Sr. fans at that. So, uh -huh. um, but anyways, there was a local dirt track here in Kodak up off exit 407. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and we called Dumplin' Valley Speedway. And, I've heard it. <laughs> and so we went, uh, we went and, and checked that place out and, and got a go-kart and entered some races. And Boom. that was the foundation of my career. All right, so moving ahead then to when you become a real NASCAR driver, how do you end up with number 42? Is that your choice, their choice? That's all on the team. Okay. So growing up from the time that I started racing until I got to this point, um, we were in full control of number, car yeah, schemes, everything. Yeah. But when you, you know, now I'm in a situation where the, the team controls everything and I just, I just show up and do my part. Right. Oh, yeah, because you can't do it without a crew chief and a pit boss and all of the things. Correct. Now, what is that? It's not pit boss is gambling. What do you call it? <laughs> well, you, well, you have your pit box, your crew chief, car chief, and then all okay. the mechanics over the wall guys. Um, but, I mean, it's a full team effort. I mean, there's some teams uh, that are filled in, you know, five and 600 employees, you know, year round to do this stuff. Okay. And your team also extends to the engineers at Toyota who have to make your car just a little faster each time you race. Correct. You know, if it wasn't for the engineers and, and Toyota and everything that they do over there at TRD and their engine department and chassis department, we would, it would be a lot tougher on us. So we give a lot of praise to those guys. Now, your first big league race in the Xfinity Series was at uh, Dover, Delaware. And, but that was a kind of a cool thing for you because you'd been there before in the in the, uh, what are the smaller leagues? What would you call it? The minor Correct. Leagues? So, yeah. so as I was coming up through the NASCAR ranks uh, in the NASCAR K&N series, I'd made two or three starts at Dover and, and had very good success there. I mean, we had like two or three top fives in like four or five attempts. Yeah. So, had a lot of confidence going to that race. And when we had got the call from the team out of Statesville, North Carolina, which is MBM Motorsports, um, they we kind of sat down and got our heads together and, and picked that race. Uh, okay. Hand, hand picked that race to me by debut so that we could maximize uh, the effort and showcase maybe right. what we were able to do there. Put you on a track that you knew. Right. Now, you've been back to Dover a couple more times since yep. then? Yeah. In fact, uh, we have another uh, great video because you've had our Kira Cup out there to make promotional videos about Chad Fincham. Correct. And you can find them at chadfincham.com. So here's a video of that Kira made of Chad and the team at the uh, Dover Speedway. What's it called? Dover International Speedway. That's what I thought. I was just want to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's whirl the tape uh, of the Dover. All 
all right, I'm not trying to be like Rain Man, but I watched that video, and you're definitely not 42. Definitely, definitely not 42. Definitely 61. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story? So there's, that's always a tough story to explain, but like I said, you know, the team is always in control of the situation. So the team that I drive for, you know, they filled three or four cars, yeah. three, three or four different car numbers. And, okay. and so, you know, on some weeks, uh, I'm 42, uh -huh. some weeks I'm 61 and they, they just, they just move you around. Um, so when you get up to the upper, upper echelon, then we'll associate you with a number, with a number, but we're not there yet. No, you can't marry even a number just yet. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully one day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But Chad Fincham Racing, that CFR, we got that, and ChadFincham.com, that's Correct. constant. Yes, it is. And uh, we're active on all the other social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we try and do as much as we can to keep everybody up to date with uh, social media these days. And I'm glad because it's, I guess this is the off season. It is. Right. So what is the, the on season? Starts with what, like Daytona? It starts with Daytona. Um, How did I know that? I guess I must know more about NASCAR than I thought I did. <laughs> just, just always remember when the Super Bowl comes, from yeah. two weeks to Daytona. Boom. <laughs> All right. But, so we start with Daytona uh, every year, and the season goes from Valentine's to Thanksgiving. So there it's a go. long season. We only get two or three weeks. Uh, break total, and uh, and the rest of it were on the road. And you're all over the country. I mean, I've seen the big trailers, you know, passing through, headed from Bristol out to even as far as California. Oh yeah, Texas. We, we go. I mean, we go border to border, north to south, the whole nine yards. And it's uh, I've, I've, they, there was a number that come out I seen on Facebook uh, a couple weeks ago, and I couldn't remember the number, but. They did a they did a mile tracker on one of the rigs on how many miles it put on it and I was like I cannot believe yeah you know and, and that's that's some of the guys on the team that don't get a lot of credits the truck drivers oh yeah they are they are away from their families and on the road and, and so the technically hustle. they are a NASCAR driver they are NASCAR <laughs> truck driver <laughs> wow all right Chad I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and I, I guess I got to stop because we got a whole bunch of people over there wanting to take a, get selfies with you yeah thank all you right. Frank appreciate it <laughs> appreciate you Chad Fincham from Chad Fincham Racing so the seasonal startup right at Valentine's Day run through Thanksgiving and we're rooting for your success we appreciate that thank all right you. And tell your mom and dad I said hey I will do all right you're watching morning in the mountains on the mountain fun life channel Thanks, Frank, for that interview, and thanks, Chad Fincham, for coming in and telling us all about uh, what's coming up in NASCAR. And remember, Chad will be racing in the Daytona 500. Our Kira Cup is down there right now getting ready for Speed Week, so that's going to be pretty exciting. So uh, before we get into what's happening this weekend, I do want to mention something for you. Sports isn't just about sitting on the couch and watching a game. Sports is going out and getting involved in it, and we here at Mountain Fun Life want to help guide your adventure. That's our whole reason for being out here. And we've struck up a partnership with Anytime Fitness, 24-7 Fitness, um, out at uh, Governor's Crossing on Collier Drive. If you go in there and mention Mountain Fun Life or Sports in the Smokies or Morning in the Mountains, anything like that, they're going to set you up with a free seven-day trial membership. So you can start working out, start getting into shape, see what the facilities are like. Like I said, mention Mountain Fun Life Channel and you get seven days of working out for free. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's move on and see what's coming down the pike this weekend. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the Knoxville Ice Bears. They have a two-game homestand this weekend. They have games both Saturday and Sunday, uh, both of them against the Peoria Rivermen. So... Uh, and like the Ice Bears do, they are uh, theme nights, which is kind of cool. If you haven't been to an Ice Bears game where they're doing a theme night, they really go all out to promote whatever the theme happens to be. And we've got a couple of interesting ones on tap this weekend. Saturday night is the Wiener Dog Race Part 2. So they had Wiener Dog races early in the season. I don't know if this is like a championship uh, matchup of the best of the best, or if the dogs didn't quite have enough time to finish their race, or how that's going to work out. But this is uh, chapter two of the great wiener dog race at the Ice Bears, and that's on Saturday. On Sunday, the dogs are going to get a rest, and we're going to race babies instead. So we got a racing theme going on here with NASCAR, and then wiener dogs, and then babies. So Sunday night is the Nick Jr. baby race night for the Knoxville Ice Bears. Also going on this weekend, uh, the Vols have a big game against a sort of rival, you might have heard of them, Kentucky. 
Kentucky's coming into into uh, Thompson Bowling Arena Saturday. Uh, the game is at one o'clock on CBS. Uh, it's going to be a big game for the Vols, uh, and it's actually going to be a big game for Kentucky as well. Um, it's always a rivalry, and uh, Tennessee has done well and then poorly. With this team, it's hard to predict what they're going to do. So we'll just have to cheer on the Vols and see how they do this weekend. Also this weekend, we have the XFL is back. You thought it was dead, but in pro wrestling and soap operas, nobody's ever really dead. They always come back. So the XFL is back this season, and they're playing a very short spring season. There are eight teams. They're going to play games for 10 weeks. Then they will have a four-team playoff for their championship. We've got some interesting rules, and I think one of the smart decisions they made is this time around, they're kind of ditching all of the wrestling atmosphere, all of the... Uh, storylines and all the stuff that's really great for pro wrestling and sports entertainment but it didn't it didn't make us take the football seriously when the xfl ran last time this time they're taking the football more seriously so we'll see how it goes there are two games on saturday two games on sunday you can check your local listings to see where they are uh, the closest team i think to us is probably in washington dc so we'll give it a watch and see how it goes so Craig's got an interesting idea. I like that. Let's put this up here. Another interesting segment idea, product testing, food, electronics, and appliances. I like that idea. I'll be happy to test food uh, always, um, except for the dried beetles that we had on uh, Morning in the Mountains a few weeks ago. I, I took a pass on that, as did uh, pretty much everybody. So that's not a bad idea. I'd like to see that. And if you have other ideas that you would like for us to follow on Morning in the Mountains, absolutely send them in. You can send them to us right here on Facebook, on comments on our posts, or you can send us email. Uh, we'll be happy to take your suggestions in any way. Um, and that leads me to repeat what I said at the top of the show. This is really your show. I'm just a host. You guys drive the drive the show your interests your comments that's what we want to work with so please if you have some sports stories that you would like us to cover uh, drop me a line my email here is r h a i l e y r haley at mountainfunlife.com r haley at mountainfunlife.com let us know about your sporting events whether they're organized sports or just things people can participate in we like to say we're guiding your adventure getting out into the smokies going hiking going fishing trail walking there's tons of things that we can do out in the smokies to get out in the door in the outdoors and participate life is not a spectator sport so we want to get you off the couch and out there and out and living it so Send us your suggestions, and we will take them. Uh, all right, so our schedule for next week. Obviously, the new schedule is working out pretty well. So Morning in the Mountains, News Edition, will be back Monday and Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we have a brand new show. It's very exciting. It's going to be Morning in the Mountains from an entertainment angle. So we're going to be talking about local shows, uh, different uh, performances, and things like that. And that's going to be with Jim Johnson, and we're pretty excited to welcome Dre Hilton to the Morning in the Mountains family. Then on Thursday, we have our Ask Frank edition, and you never can tell what's going to happen when we uh, let Frank go like we do. So that will be on Friday, and then I'll be back here on Saturday with another edition of Sports in the Smokies. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got some good information. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Roku. Uh, our podcasts are available just about anywhere that podcasts are distributed. Watch us anytime, like, share, and comment, and we'll continue to bring you the best information on the local attractions and events that we can. I'm Rich Haley on the Mountain Fun Live channel. This has been Sports in the Smokies, and we'll see you next week.